Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Before we start with announcements, Ed and Jim, would you be willing to come forward? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to cost me anything? Not a cent. <laughs> A lot of times we have announcements and the people live streaming don't have a clue who we're talking about or who's talking. So this morning, if you would just turn around. Wave to the camera. <laughs> don't throw a pie at this. Is that enough? <laughs> I would like everyone live streaming to see what it looks like to be married for 63 years. <laughs> Streaming, someone in the back of the no, uh, light hall said, and they're still talking to each other. <laughs> <coughs> See what you're missing when you're not here, right? <laughs> well, this morning you're also going to see some wonderful talent from one of our members. Al will be singing a solo by request. And I'm so looking forward to that as we welcome Paul back to the keyboard. Speaking of talent. Mm. And Rally Day is Rally Day. Rally Day is fast approaching, but so is Cars for Christ this coming Saturday. Jerry, do you want to mention anything about that? Like a last chance. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this coming Saturday, it's finally time to uh, let the rubber hit the road, as they say, and have our car show. Uh, presently, we have 15 pre-registered people uh, for the show, which is common, not uncommon. Everybody's looking at the weather, as are the committee. <laughs> we're very nervous, at least I am. Um, we're getting a little something this week that might uh, interfere with us a little bit. Uh, our Substitute day is the following Saturday, the 28th, but we don't want that. We're going to make the 21st. Uh, just to uh, give you an idea, this is the top trophy, the pastor's choice. Yes. You haven't seen it yet yourself. She'll be giving out to one lucky uh, car enthusiast uh, based on her evaluation of the car. We also have 10 trophies going to... Uh, the 10 best cars that we, the committee, pick, and then each of the cars who, each of the guys who bring the car or gal, gets to vote on other cars in the participants award. So we're giving out 12 trophies all together, and we're giving out trophies or dash plaques to go in their cars for them. Um, so we hope they'll have a great day. All the benefits, of course, are going to Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we engaged with Habitat back in the beginning of the spring uh, to build two duplex homes over on Cowpath Road. Uh, we're in, I think, the 25th. Is that the right day? September 25th? 26th. Uh, September 25th will be the groundbreaking ceremony, <laughs> um, 12 or 1, something like that, uh, right up here on the road, and we'll be invited to that, of course. So. It's going to be an exciting time. The houses won't be done until next year, of course. Uh, but all of the money that we raise will be going toward that effort. So, what do we need? We need some help. <laughs> um, there's five guys on committee. Jerry Lohan, Jerry Watson, Matt Damon, um, uh, Matt Hassan. Matt Damon? Yeah, Matt Damon. <laughs> he looks like him. He looks like him. Um, Steve Davis and myself. Um, and Jerry's a little under the weather right now, so I don't know if he's going to be able to participate with us or not. Um, so we need to set up Friday night. We're going to put the big tent up. Uh, for the scouts, we'll be doing the cooking. All the money they raise through the cooking will go to their efforts for fundraising. 
I think last time we did this, they were <coughs> about $500 in food uh, money. So they're getting something out of it, we're getting something out of it, everybody gets to eat. Um, so we can use some help Friday night, probably around 6, 6, 6.30, set up the tent, maybe move some tables around, uh, get things set up the way we need to have them uh, for the effort on Saturday. Then on Saturday, um, we need probably some help. I think Dick and Russ have offered help uh, with our raffle table. We have six vendor, uh, six companies that are providing us with uh, buckets of something. We don't know what they all are yet, <laughs> but they'll be raffled off to people who want to uh, uh, purchase them, uh, and that money will then also be going to Habitat for Humanity. That's probably the best part of the fundraising event for the day. So it's going to be a fun day. You know, I think there's going to be about 80 something and no rain. Keep praying. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> and along with preparation for Cars for Christ, I know I mentioned this before, but again, the Hope uh, Puppet Ministry team is practicing on Tuesday night, 6 to 7. So if anybody else wants to come and join us at this point, we have the puppeteers doing the syllabification, but we could use maybe some extra hands with streamers and backup vocals and things like that. So um, we'll be doing a performance at 10.30 and 12.30 on Saturday at the Cars for Christ show. Any other uh, announcements for the good of the congregation? Okay, let us prepare. Oh, JJ, yes. Good morning. 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 So, speaking of cars, many of you r realize that I inherited my mom's car after she passed away a few years ago. Well, this week we determined that it had a leaky gas tank, so I ended up getting a 2013 Hyundai Accent. <laughs> Joys. Yes, Nancy. <laughs> uh, my grandson Kevin was home for a week from Texas, and I just had a wonderful week seeing him. Yay. Very emotional. <laughs> this is somebody's bulletin. Must be. Is this yours, Jerry? Probably. <laughs> Don't need it. Okay. <clears throat> you have the whole thing memorized, <clears throat> right? <laughs> Wow. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God.
bringing him by request is number 96. wisdom, 
We claim the authority of God in making our own authoritarian claims. Let us confess our sin as we take a moment of silent personal reflection. And let us pray together the prayer of confession. O oh God, we confess that we have lived so comfortably in the abundance of our times that we have made things our gods. We spend our days dreaming of and working for possessions that cannot satisfy. The pursuit of riches replaces the quest for faith and faithful relationships. We do not know you, God, and our relationship with others is superficial at best. Redeem us, we pray, from our self-destructive ways, and restore us to your covenant community. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Yeah. 
eternal life, whose sacrifice for us calls forth a daring love of neighbor. Feed us now and lead us to your word every day, that our lives may be hymns of thanksgiving to our Creator, leading others to love and serve in your name. Amen. <clears throat> our Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalm, chapter 34, verses 9 through 14. Listen to the word of God. For he has said, it profits one nothing to take delight in God. Therefore, hear me, you, you who have sense. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should do wrong. For according to their deeds he will repay them, and according to their ways he will make it befall them. Of a truth, God will not do wickedly, and the Almighty will not pervert justice. Who gave him charge over the earth, and who laid on him the whole world? If you should take back his spirit to himself, and gather to himself his breath. Our epistle lesson is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Gospel lesson is from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. <coughs> Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Here ends God's holy word. <clears throat> this morning's message is entitled, It Doesn't Get Any Better Than Jesus. <clears throat> and I'm going to start this morning's message with a story that may be familiar to some of you about three old men who were tired of being old. So they snuck out of their retirement home one afternoon 
and headed for a huge house with a great big indoor pool. Ignoring the strange glow near the bottom, they slowly, painfully entered the pool at the shallow end. They had a wonderful time floating in the water. Back home that afternoon, they felt better than they had in years. In fact, they felt so good that they decided to do it again the next day and the next, and very soon it became clear that this was no ordinary pool. The same men who were creaking down the steps only days before were now doing cannonballs and backflips off the diving board. Can you imagine? Back at the retirement village, they were eating spicy Mexican food, dancing the tango, and flirting with their wives. The story I just shared with you is from the movie Cocoon. And to anyone who has ever grown tired of being old or feeling old, it is a delightful fantasy, a pool in which old age is washed away. Wouldn't that be wonderful? This is what will happen to us when we enter the kingdom of heaven. The old will be washed away. Can you imagine wrinkled skin becoming instantly taut and toned again without surgery or Botox? Can you imagine arthritic joints growing suddenly supple and strong without the help of glucosamine, cortisone, steroids, or other experimental procedures? How about the pleasure of leaving your cane in the corner and throwing your pills away and the side effects that go with them? Ponce de Leon, as most of you know, searched for a fountain of youth, but never found it, in this life anyway. But when you talk to young people, they will quickly tell you that youth isn't all it's cracked up to be. Yes, you can get out of a chair without groaning, but you can't show off pictures of your grandchildren. And then there are all those things to worry about. Will I pass this test that I didn't study for? Will I be able to go to college? Will I get a decent job? Will I ever get married? Will I have to leave my family and go fight in a war? Will this pimple on my nose be gone before my date on Saturday night? <laughs> Ask a 13-year-old if she would like to stay 13 forever and she'd answer in one word, no. Well, we have two young people here this morning, Ben and Evan. Would you like to stay the age you currently are now forever? <laughs> they don't know yet. I had to ask. <laughs> Although a youthful body would certainly have its advantages, it's not really eternal youth that we're looking for. Maybe it's different for boys and girls. I, I don't know. I, I didn't want to stay 13 forever. I wanted to become 16 and drive a car. It's something else, I believe, that we're looking for. We, what we want is joy, fulfillment, and satisfaction. What we want is that feeling we get, like the joy we share when a new, healthy baby arrives. What we want is that feeling we get when we see the sun come out after seven days in a row of rain. What we want is like feeling that cool breeze, like this morning after a week long of humidity and temperatures high in the 90s. What we want is that feeling we get when we see our children, grandchildren, or in some cases, great-grandchildren, take their first steps and say their first words, or see our favorite sports teams hit a home run, make a winning touchdown, or field goal. Spending time with friends and family on a Saturday morning for some who work with two days away might be thinking it doesn't get any better than this. Think about the moments when you're feeling like it doesn't get any better than this. For some people, it might be as simple as being able to walk up and down a flight of steps after recovering from surgery. And we have someone in our own congregation who experienced that very thing, who had planned to go to Florida because they thought after their knee replacement surgery, they weren't going to be able to recover on their own, and in fact, the next day after the surgery, when they came home, they were able to go upstairs to the second floor and sleep in their own bed. 
And that is a joy that I know this person is celebrating, just being able to go up and down the steps. Or for some people, it might be eating a five-pound lobster tail dripping with hot melted butter. Mm. It might be floating on your back in the ocean mm. while the hot sun warms your face and the cool water surrounds you like the perfect cushion. I'll never forget the day a family lost their little six-year-old girl at the beach. The dad was frantic. The lifeguards, the police, and dozens of people on the beach got involved in the search. My friend was a police officer, suggested heading north of our location because little children usually walk in the direction of the wind and not into the wind. He was right. About an hour later, we heard cheers and clapping. The little girl was found several miles down the beach north of her parents' blanket. She was returned to her father's arms, and she clung to him tightly. At that moment, when everyone was cheering her safe return, my thoughts were that. What's the title of my sermon? It doesn't, it doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, it really doesn't. I'm emotional when I think about it. I can live that moment this, this very moment. The love of a father and a little girl being held tightly to his chest. The joy and the relief were overwhelming emotions. If you've been lucky enough to witness your child or your grandchild or great or great great grandchild or niece or nephew or cousin or friend, um, commencement service proudly thinking it doesn't get any better than this as they receive their diploma. Years ago at my own ordination service, while my parents placed the red stole around my neck, tears streaming down their faces, they were thinking, it doesn't get any better than this. What we're living for is the joy of life itself, fulfillment and satisfaction. So I don't think Jesus could have come to us with any more provocative invitation than the one he brings, the offer of eternal life. Eternal life. And the sixth chapter of John is filled with references to that offer. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, Jesus says. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And when Jesus talks about living forever, friends, you can be sure that he is not talking merely about existing forever. This is the same Jesus who says in chapter 10 of this gospel, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Abundantly. Abundant life is made up of those moments when you want to take a deep breath and just hold it. When you want time to stand still, like that moment of that dad with that little girl clinging for the safety of her father's arms. It was a long, hour exhaustive search in the hot summer sun. And for that dad and that mom, not knowing if they were ever going to get her little girl, their little girl back, if she was just lost or she, if she had been abducted. I'm sure every one of you that have children can relate. Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews said to each other, how can this man give us 
his flesh to eat. Jesus replies, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. In fact, if we translate the true meaning of the word in Greek, trogon, it actually means to chew. Chew my flesh, Jesus says. That's the way to eternal life. The Jews walked away. This is a hard saying, they murmured. Who can hear it? And they were right. It is hard. But it is not impossible. You who have ears to hear, hear Jesus say something like this. I am the source of life. But in the same way that you won't get full by having bread in your house, you won't gain eternal life by merely being acquainted with me. It takes more than that. It takes a kind of daily feeding on me, if you will. I must become the air you breathe and the water that you drink. Learn to hunger for me in the same way that you hunger for meat, fish, potatoes, vegetables, and bread. Hunger for Jesus like you would a thick, juicy, tender steak made on the grill to perfection. Hunger for Jesus like you would a homemade spaghetti and meatballs or a lasagna dinner. Thirst for Jesus. Hunger and thirst for the bread of life and rejoice in the joy of Jesus. Rejoice in the promise of eternal life. Rejoice in the invitation to that great feast at the banquet in the heavenly kingdom of God Almighty. May God receive our continued glory and praise in Jesus' name. Our sermon hymn is just about rejoicing, number 562. Rejoice, give thanks, and sing. continue to live and take another breath or meet another day, rejoicing <coughs> and giving praises and thanksgiving to God in our deepest struggles is the best way out of those struggles. 
Let us pray. Holy God, we know that there is none greater than you. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And we are somewhere in between as we seek everlasting life, fulfillment, joy, love, understanding, wisdom, forgiveness, good health. <coughs> we know we will never achieve 100% satisfaction in this life unless we're fully immersed in your love and your grace and your glory. For it doesn't come from the things of this world, it comes from you. As we strive to get closer to you and realize sometimes how distant we really are. Yet you lowered yourself, Lord. In the body of Jesus Christ, you met with us where we are here on earth, in our struggles and in our trials. And you know what it's like to suffer. And so when we cry out to you for help, Lord God, you understand, you hear us, and you answer our deepest woes and yearnings. Especially for those we love suffering from cancer and life debilitating diseases, Lord. We thank you for friends willing to hold our hands as we're struggling through those very difficult times. <laughs> and Lord, we have so much to celebrate. A milestone for Jen, for Jan and Ed that many of us will never be able to reach a milestone of being committed to each other, devoted to each other, being able to wake up the next day and say, I love you, or I forgive you, or I'm sorry, or let's do this together, or what would you like to do today? I'm up for anything you want to do, Lord. I surrender all. We also remember Jen and Ed's loving parents, as we honor them today. We give you for the thanks for the opportunity to plan Rally Day as we can get together this year as we could not last year to celebrate and have food and fellowship and fun. We thank you for Joan sponsoring our live stream this morning in loving memory of Frank. And we lift up those in our prayer list as we name those in our hearts out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Joan, Marlene, Susan, Scott, Rose, Virginia, Shirley, Lynn, Bev, Peg, Fred, Diane, Lois, Frank, Bill, Donna, Nancy, Randy, Lord, thank you so, for so many blessings. Again, as we're able to do Cars for Christ, something we weren't able to do last year, I give you thanks for Jerry and his wonderful team, for the scouts who will be helping, and thank you for being able to help out Habitat for Humanity as they break, break ground on the 26th. Lord, our life is in your hands. As we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, our Father, Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. about it doesn't get any better than this and ordinations and installations and things like that it um, just made my message to you that much more emotional so I am one of those emotional people I apologize for that um, but it's the way I was made and now may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace Tune we know. 
I can't see the board. It is 309. Pass it on. Okay, we know this. <laughs>